On the R22, we have a Lycoming O360 J2A engine. It is four cylinders. Those cylinders are horizontally opposed. It is normally aspirated and it is direct drive air cooled. The engine has been derated from the manufacturer to have 145 horsepower. This allows the engine to have a longer time between maintenance and overhaul. It has a five minute rating of 131 horsepower, which allows us to use a little bit more horsepower for a climb out and times when we need just a little bit more power. It has a maximum continuous rating of 124 horsepower. Right here we have the side of the R22 and here's our engine. This is a Lycoming engine. So we'll talk about a couple different parts of this engine. Right here, this orange tube coming down, this is our air intake that comes into our carburetor down here on the bottom. Uh, we also have the exhaust that comes off of our engine right here and right here, goes back to our muffler, comes out of our exhaust back here. We also have this other orange tube right here that comes off of our exhaust as well. This pulls hot air into our carburetor and we can control that inside the aircraft with our carb heat assist. On the back side of our engine, we have this compartment right here. This is what's called an oil cooler. It pulls air from here, from our squirrel cage blower, in through here, pushes air through here to cool down our oil, then the oil recycles back into our engine to cool down our engine. So we're going to talk about how our power gets from our engine to our main rotor and our tail rotor. So it connects from our engine to the lower sheave, and then from, which is located right back here. Um, behind the squirrel cage blower, then it's connected to our upper sheath through two double V-belts. Inside the upper sheath, we have a sprag clutch. The sprag clutch is what allows for our engine to disengage from our rotor system during an engine failure so that we can do an auto rotation. Then it connects from our sprag clutch to our main rotor gearbox, which is located right in here. You can see this little sight glass in here. That's the sight glass on our main rotor gearbox. And then from main rotor gearbox up to our main rotor, and it goes from our drive line to our tail rotor gearbox to our tail rotor. This side of the engine has a lot more of the electrical components. Uh, some of those electrical components are, we have the battery located right here. Back here we have our alternator and our starter motor. How the starter motor works is as we crank the starter inside the aircraft, this mechanism is going to pop out, turn our flywheel to crank our engine until our engine starts. When we start the helicopter, the starter motor isn't very strong. So it's really hard for the starter motor to start the engine and rotate the whole main rotor system together. So we have it separated by a clutch actuator. So how the clutch actuator works is when we engage the clutch inside the helicopter, it's going to start moving this upper sheave up. So it's going to make a distance, a greater distance between the lower sheave and an upper sheave, tightening these V belts and slowly engaging the weight of the rotor system onto the engine. So after we start the engine, we are going to engage the clutch switch, which is going to uh, start the motor, which is going to tighten those V-belts to slowly engage the weight of the engine onto the main rotor system.